Hi, Erwan from Motion VFX. In this video, we will learn how to create a clocking effect inside Final Cut Pro 10 using the MO2 plugins from Motion VFX. And to be more accurate, we will use the MO2 version 1.1, as this update gets a powerful feature, the Alpha Channel Support, that will be very useful for this project. So for people who don't know about MO2, it is a plugin which brings complete 3D rendering engine directly inside Final Cut Pro 10 and Motion 5. With MO2, you will be able to import 3D objects, animate them, add texture, lights, replicate elements, add post effects, and get incredible quality for the rendering. As mentioned before, we will use the last feature, the Alpha Channel Support. To be sure to get the right version, you will have to go to the MN Stereo application. Check if you have the last update for MN Stereo, then MO2 1.1 should be available in your application list. So let's start from scratch and remove the final result. I will open the event library, then get my background video and drag and drop it inside my project. As you can see, the aspect ratio is not the same as my project, so I will scale a little bit to remove the letterbox. The video is a log file, so I will add a 3D LUT to modify the color grading. In the filter library, I will add MFM look effect, but I could also use MLUT, a free plugin from Motion VFX. Inside MFM look, I will activate the LUT parameter and select the LUT among the presets. I can test several LUTs and select this one, for example. Now we need to add the 3D space jet. I will go to the Generators tab and click on the MO2 folder. Inside the MO2 folder, I've got many 3D templates for titles or logos coming from packs of free templates that you can find on the Motion VFX website. There are also many expansions available that you can buy. But here, I will select the default MO2 generators and drag it on the top of my background video. I will adjust the duration, and it's done. In the inspector, I will go to the first tab to display the MO2 parameters. I will go to the Add menu in order to import the space jet. There are several additional 3D object packs available on motionvfx.com, like the electronic packs, the commercial packs, some are free packs, like the last one, the devices pack. But here I will use a sci-fi pack where I can find 3D objects like planets, satellites, space station, and a space jet. I will select it and import it inside my 3D scene. It's a little too big, so I will reduce the size. As you can see, with the new version 1.1, it's very easy to integrate 3D objects on the top of your editing. It's like a layer or a title element. For this project, I won't use the post effects, like the vignette effects, the bloom or the lens blur, so I will switch off all these effects. With MO2, you can modify the position, the rotation of the 3D element directly inside the Final Cut Pro Tens viewer. First thing I would like to do is to have a better match between the light of the background video and the space jet. There are many options, I can add some lights, but in this case I will use the fastest and easiest way, the environment map, which acts on the lighting of the 3D object. So in the scene settings, I will click on the environment parameters and the blue button to modify the map, also called IBL, image-based lighting. In MO2, I've got many choices between the CG map or a real map from the inside or the outside. If I click on one, you will see it will affect directly the lighting of the space jet. So I will select this one and I will adjust the horizontal offset parameter in order to get the best result. To polish the effect, I can do some color correction on the map here, I will double the gamma parameter in order to remove some contrast. I can play with the U, but here it is OK. I will decrease a little bit the saturation and the brightness. OK, so now the space jet match with the video background. What we need to do now is to create an animation to add motion to the space jet. 
So back to the first frame, I will add keyframes on position and rotation, then adjust the position directly inside the viewer or inside the inspector. And on the last frame, I will add keyframes to change the position of the spade jet. So now the animation is OK. I will rename my MO2 layer and call it Space Jet Animation Reference. OK, so now we can create our clocking effect. To do so, I will duplicate the two elements. And I will select the copy of the MO2 layer. In the inspector, I will select the Space Jet and open the sub element we can see that all the different parts of the space jet get the same texture. In fact, when I'm selecting the body texture, you can see that all the textures are linked. By clicking on the Materials blue button, I've got access to all the different texture or material available. You can find concrete, metal, rock texture. For example, I can choose the lava texture, double click on it and it will apply on my space jet. Here I need that my space jet becomes invisible, so I will go to the transparent category and select the clean water texture. As you can see, it doesn't look very transparent. I need to do some modifications. First, I will select the scene settings. In the background parameters, I will switch a type from alpha channel to drop zone. As we've got a background video below the MO2 layers, I don't need to add the drop zone. By default, it will look automatically below, but the effect is still not good. So I will have to select the materials of the body and we'll go to the last material parameter, the opacity. By default, we are in the refraction mode and we have three parameters, opacity, specular opacity and IOR. We will adjust the IOR. IOR means index of refraction. If we decrease to one, we will have the same index of refraction of the air. So almost no refraction. and we can't even distinguish a space jet. And it is why we will add a little touch of refraction in order to get some volume. We will enter the value 1.01. Also, we can reduce the specular opacity to remove some lighting on the spaceship. If you want to add more reflection, you can play with the roughness and metalness parameters. Okay, so now I've got the space jet with a clocking effect and the space jet without the clocking effect. So we need to put the clocked effect on the top of the space jet. To do so, we'll need to select both elements and create a carbon clip. I will name it Space Jet Clocking. As we've seen before, by default, MO2 is set to the alpha channel mode. So my Space Jet reference has its own alpha channel. We can see it if we go to View and select Alpha. So I will use this alpha channel information and add it into my clocking effect carbon clip. It is very easy to do. Just copy the layer and put it over the compound clip. Then we will use the blending mode and we will switch to stencil alpha. But as you can see, it doesn't work. The reason is that MO2 layer doesn't work exactly like the other layers in Final Cut Pro 10. To resolve this situation, it's quite easy. You just have to create a carbon clip of this MO2 layer. And then change the blend mode to stencil alpha. And now it works. I will group the two elements by creating a new carbon clip. Now I can put it over the other elements. And now we have the clocking effect in place. 
So to reveal the space jet, I will need to draw a mask. I can add a mask from the filters library. I can create the shape. But if it does the job by revealing the space jet, we can see that it doesn't work well as it looks like a 2D wipe. What we really need is a volumetric mask, meaning a mask following the volume of the space jet. To do so, I will duplicate one more time the space jet reference. In the inspector, we'll select the texture and modify it. I will select a basic texture and remove the texture from the various parameters like normal or metalness. I will change the albedo texture color and switch it to black. Now we will add a light and to be accurate we will use a spotlight. I will change the orientation of the light to look down. In the light parameters I will deactivate the rounder shape and I will increase the light radius. I will use a perspective view to place the light in the right position, meaning I will center it over the space jet. Then I will add some keyframes to animate the light. So the light will go below the space jet and won't light the space jet anymore. The cool thing is that the light will follow the volume of the space jet and we have the volumetric mask we need. I will create a compound clip of this MO2 layer and use this as a mask for the clocked space jet. But there will be a little change in the technique as the animation mask is a result of the light and the light doesn't modify the alpha channel as we can see here. So instead using the stencil alpha mode we will use a stencil luma mode and boom, I've got my animation applied on the clocked effect. So I can select both elements and group them with a compound clip. We just have to put it over the other layer and we have our volumetric mask animation. It is nice, but it can be nicer. The effect is too clean, in fact. It would be great to add some chromatic aberration on the edges of the effect during the animation. To do so, I will need a copy of the volumetric mask animation. So I will go inside the compound clip. I will copy it. And paste it here. And switch back the blending mode to normal. To create a chromatic aberration, I will use native effects from Final Cut Pro 10. In the filters library, I will go to the stylize category and add the projector effect. As you can see, the projector effect will add some ghosting effects. I will add also a bad TV effects. This one will add some chromatic aberration. In the inspector, I will invert the order of the two filters and I will adjust the parameters. First, I will decrease the amount of the projector and I will also decrease the amount of the bad TV effects. I will switch to the white noise and choose a color dodge for the blending mode. Now I need to restrict the effect only on the edges. To do so, I will duplicate the layer and put it on the top. On the copy, I will remove the two effects. And switch the blend mode to difference. As you can see, now I've got only the edges of the space jet. As usual, I will select both and create a new compound clip and drag it over the other element. To get the right result, I will need to switch the blending mode from normal to add, screen or lighten.
For this project, I want the chromatic aberration only during the unclocking effect, so we need to adjust the in and out point before and after the animation and add some dissolve by pressing Command T. I will reduce the effect by adjusting the opacity parameter, and it's done. Of course, all the work we've done is non-destructive. We didn't render any effects, so at any time we can go back inside different compound clip and modify any parameter we want. To polish the effect, I will add a look on it. So I will select all the layers and create the last compound clip. I will go to the filters library and select an Amphim look preset. I will select the Frosty preset. I will just decrease the chromatic aberration, adjust a little bit the lens blur and it's done. Now you just have to add some sounds or epic music. One last word, if you want to try MO2, don't hesitate to go to the Motion VFX website and download the demo version. To help you to start with MO2, I invite you to subscribe and go to the YouTube channel where you can find tons of tutorials on MO2. Have fun, thanks for watching, ciao ciao, bye bye.